Hello, everybody, and welcome to History Slash Law Bite number 191, dated February the 21st, 2021. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Slash Law Bite is entitled Elk vs. Wilkins, 112 U.S. 94, 1884. Elk vs. Wilkins was a landmark U.S. Supreme Court decision that addressed the issue of birthright citizenship with respect to Native Americans at the time. Birthright citizenship has always been controversial, one from the very beginning, all right? And this case is not discussed very often in connection with it, but its force remains in effect to this very day, although it is no longer uh, applicable to Native Americans, uh, having uh, all remaining ones been naturalized um, by the uh, Indian Citizenship Act of 1924. All right. So in Elk versus Wilkins, at issue uh, was Mr. John Elk and his desire to become an American citizen. John Elk was, of course, a Native American, a member of the Winnebago tribe who renounced his tribal allegiance to them and began living amongst American citizens in Omaha, Nebraska. All right. Mr. Uh, Elk uh, obviously worked, probably paid taxes, and did the normal things that American citizens do. All right. And thus, uh, he felt that by virtue of him being born in the U.S. and having renounced his uh, tribal affiliation and now living amongst American society that he was entitled to vote like American citizens are. All right. So he based his argument upon section one of the 14th Amendment, uh, known respectfully as the Citizenship Clause, with respect uh, to his quest. All right. So I'll read that to you. Section one of the 14th Amendment reads as follows. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Sounds pretty straightforward. Right. Mm -hmm. And so from the language of that, Mr. Elk felt that he was an American citizen by virtue of this provision, having now, having been born in the U.S. rather, and now living amongst American society no longer affiliated with his Winnebago tribe. So when he went registered to vote, his request was denied by uh, Mr. Wilkins, uh, that registrar. And as such, he filed suit in federal court to be able to register to vote and be recognized as an American citizen. All right. So the matter obviously traveled up, reaching the Supreme Court of the United States. All right. And the justices were thus presented with a fairly simple question. All right. Was a Native American who obviously was born in the United States, but not technically subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S., but rather subject to the jurisdiction of their tribe at the time of their birth. Was that Native American uh, who voluntarily relinqu relinquished all affiliation with that tribe? and decided to live amongst American society, now an American citizen. All right. And the Supreme Court, in a 7-2 to two decision, ruled no. Indeed, in an opinion by Justice Horace Gray, the Supreme Court, like I said, in a 7-2 to two decision, held that although Okay, Mr. Elk was born in the U.S. At the time of his birth, he was not subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S., but instead his tribe. Okay, although he was born here, but not subject to our jurisdiction, he, by virtue of renouncing all aff affiliation with his tribe and now living amongst American society, was not automatically granted citizenship by Section 1 of the 14th Amendment, all right? The primary thing being 
that at the time of his birth, he was not subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S. Let me reread section one of the 14th Amendment one more time. It says that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Okay? So not only do you have to be born here, but subject to the jurisdiction. All right? Now, Mr. Elk being born a Native American and subject to the jurisdiction of the tribe that he belonged to, the Winnebago, at the time of his birth, technically did not automatically make him an American citizen. Even though he was born in the U.S., at the time of his birth, he wasn't subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S., all right? And even though he had renounced his tribe and begun living among American society, that did not automatically make him a citizen, all right? Because at the time of his birth, he was not subject to the U.S. jurisdiction. He was subject to the jurisdiction of his tribe. And therefore, if Mr. Elk wanted to become an American citizen, he would have to go through the standard naturalization process, whatever that happened to entail at the time. And thus, he lost his case and was not permitted to register to vote as such. All right? So, that was the holding of the court in Elk versus Wilkins. And I'll go through that one more time. And the holding rule held that, essentially, Mr. Elk and all similarly situated Native Americans, in spite of being born in the U.S., all right, it did not make them automatically an American citizen by the language of Section 1 of the 14th Amendment, because at the time of their birth, they were subject to the jurisdiction of their tribe, not the U.S. They owed their allegiance to their tribe, not the U.S. And even if they had renounced their tribe and begun living amongst American society, none of that mattered. It did not automatically make them American citizens by virtue of birth, because at the time they were born, they were not subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S., but instead, their tribe. All right? So that was that, and was a defeat for Mr. Elk. Now, like I said earlier in the video, uh, this no longer applies to Native Americans because in 1924, all remaining Native Americans uh, who were not naturalized at that point were naturalized by the Indian Citizenship Act of that year. All right, but this case is still a binding decision that could be used uh, in future questions with respect to birthright citizenship. All right, very technical constitutional issue, one that definitely brings out very passionate arguments on both sides. Okay, so if you have any questions about Elk versus Wilkins, uh, 112 U.S. 94. 1884, leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, please do so uh, now. Your support is greatly appreciated. Um, and I hope you learned a thing or two from this and enjoyed the video. You know, we've come a long way as a country. We've still got a long way to go, for sure. So, take care, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you at the next bite. Peace.